Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Tina Ray and this is my seventh session of my Teens and Tweens um, series of 20 sessions. Today I'm going to focus on developing our problem solving skills, something that I think all of us can get better at um, in, a, in, our, in our daily lives. It's something that I know over the last few years I've become more skilled at because I've really begun to focus on how to solve those problems in a stepped way. So, why is this important? It's important because if we are trying to manage our fears and our anxieties, things that sometimes seem quite overwhelming, we've really got to try and develop what I call have a go behaviors. And this is when we try something, even if we're not quite secure or comfortable about doing it. It's about being a little bit brave. And it's hard sometimes, it's really difficult for some of us to do that. The problem is that the psychology of fear and anxiety tells us that we only really get over our fears and our worries if we confront them. Now, you need to experience that object of your fear in what I would call a safe way. And notice then that you can actually begin to handle it step by step. This doesn't mean that, for example, if you're frightened of heights, that you go straight up to the highest building that you can find. Or if you're frightened of swimming, you jump into the water. Um, I think this is really, really important. It's about doing it step by step and asking for help as we need it. Very often when I work with children and young people, I work with them to develop what we call an anxiety ladder. And we draw this out in, in usually in about 10 steps, but it can be fewer or more than that, okay? And what we'll try to do is to identify the gentle steps, the mini steps that we would take in order to be able to face up to the fear. We would write that down at the top of the ladder and at the bottom of the ladder, we would put the least anxiety provoking element of that particular situation or that feared thing. So for example, if you were frightened of dogs, then your ladder may begin with hearing about a dog or reading about it or looking at a picture of a dog. That might be the bottom rung of your ladder. So if you want to have a go at this, very, very useful strategy, I think. You can draw that ladder out for yourselves with 10 or more steps. Then write down all the gentle, easy things that you could do to face and conquer the fear that you would put right at the top. Now, in this example here, it's fear of being the centre of attention. It might be fear of going into a social situation like a party when you're on your own. It might be fear of talking in front of the rest of your class, for example. But begin by putting at the bottom of the ladder the easiest thing, the easiest or least feared element of that situation. And what you do then is you just work your way up step by step by step. Don't make great big goals because that makes it so hard and we can get overwhelmed by those and it can then make us kind of feel as though we failed again. So it's about making sure there's very, very small steps. What happens then over time is that we give ourselves over time, good evidence to show us that we can actually be with that feared object. We can get over our particular fear or worry. Those fears or worries, they're not there forever and we can do something about them. We can take a wee bit of control. I also think it's really important to use step when we're problem solving because sometimes we can feel a real sense of helplessness, like there's nothing that we can do to sort it out. The problem's just too big, it's too much for us. And then what happens is our emotions take over and they stop us from really thinking logically. It's almost like we have an emotional hijack. So we stop being able to process information and just think clearly about how we're going to manage to sort out that problem. So it's important to stop, to think and to reflect. And knowing how to solve problems step by step is a really important set of skills that we can all benefit from because it really prevents us from getting over anxious. So let's go through the step. So step one, if you find yourself worrying about a problem you're facing, write down exactly what that problem is. Be very specific. I'm worried I won't cope isn't specific for example. Whereas I'm worried that I will forget people's names when I go into my new school is specific and it's important to be that specific. Step two, you then thought storm or brainstorm all the possible ways that you can think of to sort that problem out. You write them all down as many as possible. You can work with someone else to do this, work with a trusted adult or your friend, but actually writing down as many as possible that you can think of. Once you've got that list of possible solutions, step three, 
is that you go through them one at a time and write down the pros, what's good about that solution, and the cons, what's not so good, what's bad about that solution possibly, and think about the consequences of each solution. So it's almost like you have three different columns then. You've got your pros and cons, and then you've got what you actually think will happen if you do that. Okay, so what the consequences are. So pros, cons, and consequences. Step four, when you've got all of those written out and you can see the pros and consequences, then decide which ones, sorry, the pros and cons, then decide which one solution that you're going to choose. And, and it's really important to be, again, specific, which is the solution that I'm gonna choose at this point in time. If you can, check with someone else, someone who's a trusted friend or an adult who supports you in school and just check out that it really is in their view as well, the best solution for you. And then just go and do it, have a go, be that little bit brave and have a go. Step five, when you've actually done this, when you've actually really taken those steps to solve that problem, take a new look at it again, reflect. Is it sorted out now? Has it changed? Is it still there? Go back to step one then and problem solve again if you need to. So it doesn't mean you failed if it's not been solved absolutely. What it means is that you might need to go back and start the process again. So think about the problem, be more specific, okay? Find out what the pros, the cons are of each of the solutions that you've brainstormed and then implement, have a go, try it out pick out the one that you think is gonna work the best. If it didn't work, then start again. So you can see it's a cycle, a problem solving cycle, step by step. My top tip really for this session is that if that problem does seem too much for you to handle on your own, then please ask a trusted friend or adult to work through each of these steps with you from the outset, right from the beginning. If you're worried and it seems really, really a big problem and very overwhelming, then please do that. Just remember this, that talking to people is the first big and best step that we can take in terms of sorting out our problems and our worries and fears. So we know a problem shared is a problem halved. It doesn't make it go away, but it certainly helps you to feel protected and supported. And that's half the battle in my view. So I hope this has been useful. I hope that you can make use of this anxiety ladder and the whole stepped approach to solving problems. Perhaps these are the two things that you might want to actually include in your toolbox of well-being now. Think about what you do now in terms of solving problems. Do you need to reflect more on this? Do you need to change the way that you approach them? Could you do um, your anxiety ladder with a friend, with a trusted adult, could you actually complete that and work through any, any real issues that you have at this current time? So please, please take the, this away in terms of thinking about it and thinking what you could incorporate into your own plan. Thanks again for listening and I hope that this has been useful. I hope also that you'll join me next time for my next session in this series.